six steps to buying a rental property in 2024. Ladies, welcome. My name is Becky Nova. I am the host of the Lady Landlords podcast and founder of our Lady Landlords community. And I am here to help you kick off 2024 with making sure that you know the exact steps of what you need to do to be able to buy a rental property this very year, at least one. So we're going to be breaking down the six steps that you have to go through. So grab a pen and paper if you do not have one or your phone for note sections, whatever you can do to make sure that you get these steps down and in their order. All right. So first thing that I always have women start with in our inner circle program is identifying their goals. We need to first really think about what we actually want in real estate before we can actually go out and get it. I see this as the biggest mistake that other investors make is they start just chasing what everybody else is doing on the internet. Oh, somebody said we should all be going and buying multifamilies in Ohio. So everybody heads over there. No, we should buy turnkey properties. No, we should do the Burr strategy. There's so many different things that we could do in real estate investing. There are so many different strategies. We have to identify what it is that we really want. For example, there are times when my goals, when my strategy completely changes based on what I have going on. What I mean by that is many of you know from our community or listening to other podcast episodes that my goal is to really just go travel. I want to be able to live out of the country. I want to go see as many countries as I can and really spend a good amount of time in those places, not just go for a week vacation and come back home to reality. To me, it's something that's really important and why I'm investing in real estate is to find that freedom that allows me to live life on my own terms. But I need to match that with the right goal that's going to work for me. So for example, I go live in the Dominican Republic during the winter months. I don't like to see snow. That's where I want to go be. So when I go down there, I'm usually not looking to pick up properties. Then I'm going to have to do a rehab. So a burr that's going to be extensive rehab. If you're not familiar with that term burr, that's when we actually buy a property and can usually get it for a much cheaper rate because we have to make sure that we are rehabbing it and then refinancing it to pull our cash out before we get that rented. That takes a lot of work to be overseeing those contractors. Also in New York, it kind of gets cold there. So this might not be something that I really want to do during those winter months. It also might just be something that there's a lot more going on in my life at that period in time. And managing contractors and overseeing construction projects just might not fit with the things that I'm looking to be able to do. Those times I might say, hey, I need something a little bit more turnkey. I want to buy something that already has tenants in place, that already is updated, that I really don't have to do much work for. Cool, maybe I'm going to have to pay a little bit more for it, but I'm not going to have the headaches and I'm not going to have to do the work that I would on other properties. It's really important to make sure that those things align. I feel like this is one of the reasons why so many women back away from real estate investing because they just didn't enjoy it because they're not getting the things that they really wanted. They're like, oh, well, I listened to somebody else's podcast that told me that I had to do a burst strategy. And then all of a sudden they're living at a construction site and that wasn't really on their plans. That wasn't really something that worked with either their full-time job, with having a family, whatever it may be. So before you go out there and do anything else, you really need to think about what strategy is going to fit right with your goals to really make sure that you can set yourself up for success at the beginning. Now, once you're able to put that part in place, because that to me is building out that blueprint, that is the overarching everything that you need to be thinking about as you go through the next five steps. But once you have that strategy and goal clear and you know exactly what you're looking for and how you're going to do it, now we need to start putting those pieces into place. So let's say, for example, and this is actually one of the things that I'm going to be working on in 2024, is one of the properties that I want to buy is actually going to be a two-family property. It's going to be in Westchester County. It's going to be up to a million dollars. That's a property that I'm going to be looking for. It's probably going to be a little bit more on the turnkey side, right? So that's going to work with one of the goals that I have for 2024. Now that I've identified what I'm going to be really looking for and what's going to fit for me in my lifestyle at that point in time, I really want to get clear on where my market is. I know I just said Westchester County, but Westchester County, New York is huge. So step number two is your market research. That's where you really want to be able to look and research and learn what's going on in various markets. This could be something that's maybe local to you, where once again, you're looking into 
different towns within a county? Or are you really kind of saying, what state do I want to invest in? Or what country do I want to invest in? You really need to get a very good understanding of what's going on in that market. You need to understand where you're going to be buying a property and what impact that's really going to have on your rental and the work that you're going to have to do. So step number two is market research. You need to really identify where it is that you're going to be buying that property. Now, once you've identified where that's going to be, step number three is to build your team. This is where now when you know, okay, this part in White Plains in Westchester County is going to be where I'm going to be looking. You want to make sure to find the best people that are going to know that area. That comes to your realtor. If you are whatever type of lender that you're using for a project, that's going to come to your realtor that you want to make sure is an absolute expert in what that area is. Number two, whatever type of lending that you're going to be using, you want to make sure that they cover that area. You want to make sure to get that solidified and make sure that they can actually lend what you're looking for in where that location is. Three, you want to decide if you're going to be using a real estate attorney. That's something you do not have to do in every state. But if that is something you're doing, which I recommend regardless of the state that you are in, if that's something you're doing, you want to make sure that you find somebody that's local that understands how that market's going to work and what the laws are there. Title company, contractors, property manager, all of those different people you can now put in place since you've identified your market. You always wanna be able to really look for the people that are gonna be the experts and the people that are gonna understand the vision and the goal that you set out in step number one. Now, now we have our team in place. Step number four is we really want to be able to finalize what are buy boxes? Our buy box is that criteria of what we're looking for. I alluded in the first step, identifying my goal and strategy, that I wanted to purchase a multifamily property up to a million dollars in Westchester County. But now I need to finalize my buy box over here in step number four. By this point now, I already have my lender in place. I already did my market research. I now need to see what I can actually get approved for, what I can really buy. Then that's something that I'm going to have to adjust what my price point maybe is. I said in step number one, I wanted to buy something that was up to a million dollars. I might not have the availability. Maybe my lender actually says, hey, lady, sorry, we could only give you a loan up to $480,000. Well, that's going to have to now change. That I'm going to need that finalized information to pass that along to my realtor or to a wholesaler that I'm working with or whatever that looks like. But to make sure that I'm looking at the right types of deals based on the actual financing I can get. So that's really where we're pulling together. Steps one, identifying your goal and strategy. Two, your market research. And three, building your team. You're going to pull that all together in step number four, where then now you get that hard, concrete criteria that you're going to be buying with. Then once you have that, you don't have to focus on all of those other things and other options. You can actually stop scrolling on Zillow because now you're not just aimlessly searching for something. You are identified and clearly looking for something very specific, okay? Once you get through that step number four of finalizing your buy box, number five is my favorite step. That's where you get to go shop. That's where now you're identifying those properties that could work for you. This is where deal analysis is going to become really important because now you're going to see what opportunities are actually out there. You have to really understand your numbers in real estate. You have to be able to understand and how to calculate all of the different numbers that are important to you. For me specifically, I tend to look more for cash flow and also appreciation over time. But in step number one, you really need to identify what factors you're looking for. Is this a short-term play, a long-term play for you? Is this something you're just flipping or is this something that you plan on keeping forever and maybe passing down to your kids in the future? Whatever that looks like, it is in step number five that we need to understand how our numbers are calculated and make sure that we are letting those numbers tell us about that property so we can figure out if it fits into that buy box that we set in step number four, or if this is just not gonna be a fit and we should just throw it in the trash and move on to the next property. Then once we've shopped and identified that property, now step number six, once you have now acquired that property, you have a couple different options here. Here, you're either rehabbing that property, maybe you're flipping it, maybe you are doing that first strategy, whatever that looks like, but you have to get it ready to either rent or to sell. So you're gonna have to be working closely with that contractor that you identified in step number three of building your team, but you're now getting that work done in step number six. And then the other option 
is that you have it rented out. Maybe you bought a turnkey property. Maybe you had tenants in place. And you just have to make sure that your rental business is running the way that you see it, regardless of if you use a property manager or if you are self-managing your properties. And I self-manage all 16 of my properties. Regardless of which way you do it, you need to make sure that this new acquisition now fits into those systems that you have already set up, hopefully set up for your rental business. I have a whole other episode all about the systems that you need to be able to manage your properties for just a couple hours a month. So if you haven't heard that, make sure to go listen to that episode so that way you can make sure to have more time in your day and your life to do the things that you enjoy more than being a landlord. But those are my six steps for buying a rental property in 2024. If you need any help breaking down those steps or learning how to put those steps together and identifying the goal and strategy that's going to be right for you, reach out. You might be a candidate for the Lady Landlords Mentorship Program. We go through those steps every single day and make sure to get great clarity on what you should be doing in every single step along the buying process. So if you need help, feel free to reach out to me in the Lady Landlords Facebook group or shoot me an email at becky at lady-landlords.com. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope this will help you kick off 2024 in buying your next rental property. Do make sure to hit the subscribe button so you do not miss another episode of the Lady Landlords podcast. We release new episodes every single Tuesday. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please do make sure to leave a five-star review sharing why you enjoyed today's episode. It really helps other women be able to learn about our podcast and realize what great things real estate can do for them too. Thank you so much and see you next Tuesday for the Lady Landlords podcast. Thank you for listening to the Lady Landlords podcast. If you're feeling stuck in your real estate investing journey, visit lady-landlord.com to book a 15-minute orientation call with me and see if you're ready to join our mentorship program. Or you can subscribe to our newsletter and join our Facebook group for exclusive real estate investing tips and offers. Invest with confidence. Become a Lady Landlord today.